Wait for it. My goodness, my friends. I told you guys when we were filming at a Hallover Inlet that there is a pilot house catamaran zipping down Hallover Inlet. Rudy. And here it is. This is what we were looking at. I saw you guys doing a bunch of sea trials. I have to. I'm going to build a new boat. Got to take it out and see how it does. Was, no frigates this, on it yet, but you know. Was this the actual boat? This is the one. There's only one so far. This is hole number one. So you saw it out there at Hallover Inlet. All right, so 46 foot boat catamaran. 46 pilot house. It's the exact same hull as the regular 46 catamaran. You've been on that boat before. I did, yes, I did. Yeah. There's a few videos about that boat. Yes, and we, we're actually, we'll reference back to that. I'll put a link, guys, so you guys can check it out. Yeah. But I'm, look, I'm here at the Convention Center, Fort Lauderdale, 2022. I'm super excited. This is one of the boats that I wanted to film. I knew you were going to be here. I thought it was going to be in the water, actually, but... I've been trying to get these boats in the water forever, but we're in the convention center. We found a way to make them in. Well, yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about it, and let's walk the boat and show them what's going on. So it's the first one, and it's the first of its kind. You've seen pilot house catamarans, but they've always been one-offs. They've been customized, highly customized. This is the first production pilot house catamaran that you could see, and there was a lot of challenges to overcome. He's actually in the boat right now behind me, Scott Wood. He's our senior vice president of design. This is his baby. He designed everything that's on this. Maybe so, we can get some some uh, we can insight. Crash him. Maybe we'll crash him in for an interview. He doesn't know there. he's going to be right on the shoulder. Hey, that, hey, that's what we're good at, though, over here on the you're the best at on that. my channel. It's a, it's crazy how sneaky you are with all the equipment that you have. Because I'll be talking to somebody, I'll turn over. Oh my God! <laughs> well, listen, that's practice. <laughs> it doesn't very, very sneaky, that. sir. So okay, so where are we? Okay, let's talk so about here. Yeah, we're, we're in the cockpit area. So, if you've seen the regular forty six, it doesn't look that different. But what's nice is, when you look at the renderings, what's the first thing that people thought? Oh, it's not going to have the same amount of fishability. This is the exact same position of the seat of the normal 46 as the pilot house. What's different is actually below Alfred's feet right now. You lose one in-floor live well, because this is where the generator lives. And I'll be right underneath here. A few features in the back of the pilot house that are fairly innovative is, we're all in camera up here too, so we have a rear-facing camera. It's a normal Garmin you know, vessel view so you could see everything you want. Um, we did a little bit of a change here on this seat. Mm -hmm. You can open up as one panel. Some people do that, but you know, it can be heavy for some. Now it's split, so you have a little bit of a lighter piece to open. So if you want to open one independently and say, hey man, instead of having them get up and seat, to so someone scoot over and you can still access all of your stuff in your cooler. Uh, because this is a power window, so there's a remote control right here that gets the glass to go up and down. Nice. Could put it over a little, bit, a little bit more, Rudy, so I can see that. I, yeah, I can you. show that. I got you. you. Guys, we can do it normally from the inside, but that's good. That's good. So um, you have a power window. Because of where the window is, mm -hmm. you lose a little bit of your tackle storage, but you still have tackle storage in the boat for pushing some of your boxes. Nice. So you still have that. That's something that's on pretty much every Invincible that isn't a flat back. You have a seat back with a folding tackle center. This obviously goes up and down, so if you want fresh air going in and out, you can. If you want to yell at the guy who's at the helm, or the guy at the helm wants to yell at you, because he could see you on his camera up front mm. saying, hey man, uh, pitch your bait when you see this marker, okay? Boom, you have that converted in and taken care of. But also, he might be watching you if you're not watching your spread and say, hey, that left short looks a little, uh, looks a little busy right there. Maybe you want to go check that. So, so cool let's, communication. let's talk about some of the live wells and stuff like that. What do we got going on here? We're using one right now with, <laughs> yeah. with, a, with a little camera we got going on there. But what we got, what, you two have, live wells right You here? have two in the transom and one here in the floor right at your foot. Because it's a catamaran, you don't have any center storage because of the tunnel. Yes. Obviously, the catamaran. So you have all of your storage and your spaces along each of the sponsons. It has two bilges. This bilge has a six-pump sea chest. Uh, last year, we went standard with Best Marine sea chest, so it's down there on the end. All right. So, what's the beams looking at on this? It's a little beyond 12 foot, so it's like 12 foot 2, 12 foot 3 in terms of beam, and then for a 46 foot, it's 45 feet 11 inches long. So I, I love, I love this, these steps to 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 the top of. Yeah. If you want to opt for a second station, it's an easy accessibility. Wow, well, this with yeah. a second station would look amazing. I want to see one with a gap tower really badly. Oh man. I think it would look really, really nice. So, so, so I can see you guys from the Pacific Northwest kind of like, hey, 
I kind of like that boat. Guys, where you're looking for protection from the elements, I mean, down here we love it for air conditioning, obviously, for you know warm weather, but in cold weather environments to get out of that, also great. Un and also guys who are making long runs. Unbelievable, I mean, yeah. You have some who are going 200 miles offshore, they don't want to go back and forth. It has a thousand gallon fuel capacity. You can stay out there as long as you'd like and you can drift and sleep. And comfort, right? Mm -hmm. The ladies, the family. Exactly. Everybody's going to be like, I don't mind staying a, a day extra. Right. I mean, a lot of the guys in the Gulf now who have the 40 cat, for example, they'll go out there, but they have to sleep under the stars. They got uh, bean bags and everything. Now you don't have to do that anymore. You want to take the wife and kids? You can. So let's go, let's go towards the bow and then uh, we'll go ahead and do... Uh, because of the height of everything, we put electric outriggers. Okay. So these will actually open them up and you have another head unit. But yeah, you can see pretty good ingress and egress too. The door obviously opens and closes manually. You don't have these electrified for a reason. You can always open and close them as you need to. Fairly simple tracking system. Keeps you out of the way. You got tow kicks underneath so you can still move your way around. One less thing to break. Exactly. It's the same layout across from the normal 46. So all the way at the bow, you've got a two-tier kind of a bench. This is really comfortable when you go up there and lay down. It's really ergonomic. And for being such a high seating position, we added a little bit more recession in here so you can actually don't feel like you're going to fall out of the boat if you're running. We're not up here running at speed anyway. This is something that you're just going to be at anchor, drifting, relaxing. You're not going to be up here going like 40, 50 miles an hour. It feels, it feels pretty high. It's very high, which is one why you have the grab bars and why you have the recessed piece so you're actually secured in there if you want. So small children and stuff like that could run around this thing and you don't even have to worry. Exactly. And the nice thing too about the second bench, because there's a forward sleeping berth, this folds up. So you can still get natural fresh air to come through and you have an extra window for additional daylight if you ever wanted to have more daylight it folds out of the way it stays up like this so in terms of kids safety it's great to where they can crawl around anywhere they want this is going to be sturdy enough because it's a solid metal bracket that's holding it in place and the only way that this closes is you have to pull it up fairly high you'll hear two clicks when you pull it up and that's what brings mm. it back down so Simple. It stays out of the way. Simple. I like it. Less is more. I really, really like that. So, mm -hmm. so tell me about here. I mean, I can walk these gunnels, run around these gunnels with this non-skin and fish everywhere. You can do boat. hot laps. Yeah. The nice thing, and that's, that's the piece of this boat with every boat that we do, is that you don't want to sacrifice the fishing. These are all additional luxuries to help you fish more and fish longer, not to stop you from fishing, period. You have space here where you can gaff a fish from the bow, you can gaff a fish from the, from the transmitter, you can, you can pretty much do everything across the boat. The one thing that I like is that if you're actually fighting something quite heavy, now you have a little bit more support in terms of where you want to go if you're pulling in a big tuna. The one thing that you need to really coordinate with your crew is to make sure that you've got a guy when they're going to gaff. That little bit of ingress and egress, having a large console like this, it makes you a little bit easier to get, a little harder to get out of the way. but. That's the only drawback. If you have a captain that knows what they're doing in terms of how they want to spin the boat around for you to bring in the fish. Is there a big difference as far as weight now with the pilot house as, as opposed to the regular 46? Only a couple thousand pounds more because this entire enclosure is infused carbon fiber. So it's, it's oh. so light in fact that if you don't have, so at the factory before mm -hmm. they put in all the upholstery and the seats and the wiring. So when it's just the structure itself, okay. two guys can pick it up. That's how light it is. Wow, that's, that's, that's good to know. It's bonded and it's bolted down, so it's extremely secure. Got this privacy glass here on the side too, which is really, really nice. But that was one part too, because when you do the normal 46, light, like when it's bone dry, it's about 20,000 pounds. When you add fuel, when you add a few things, about 22, 23. Mm -hmm. This is closer to 24, 25,000 pounds, but it doesn't sacrifice much in terms of performance because these guys sea trialed it when you saw it at Hall over that I day. I did. I saw it. There was a bunch of people on it. On Having Bis a great time. Right. Biscayne Bay is where you do a lot of like the, the seat, uh, what's it called, like the uh, speed testing mm -hmm. because that's where it's going to be the flattest calm water where you know, hey, how fast does it actually go based on the seat conditions and all that not being a factor? You guys weren't scared to run it out of Hall over, I'll tell you that much. 400 gallons of fuel. There were seven guys, I think, on the boat that day or one of those sea trial days. Mm -hmm. With that load, it did 75 miles an hour top speed. Nice. And the normal 46, regular 46, the mm -hmm. open, we're going to call it like the open version now, Catamaran. And we'll put a link to that video as well so they can know it. Same power, light on fuel, can top out about 80 miles an hour. So you're not losing much in terms of a top wow. speed. Guys, absolute beauty. So is there any other new modifications that you guys said, well, you know, we can tweak this on the 46. Uh, 
while you know we have this new boat in production. The only really, the only real tweaks is just in terms of how you position the pilot house to make everything work to not sacrifice all that extra space. Because okay. the idea of the helm stations will be a little bit more forward mm -hmm. to give you that fishability in the back, just to keep you from not being too cramped. Uh, it's just more versatility of how we use the space to accommodate the pilot house more. You have more headroom because this entire structure is so large. My friend who I used to work with is 6'5". He came to visit the boat earlier and he fits in there with a few inches of space. You could fit a guy who's about 7 feet tall. I'm 6'5", 225 and ripped. <laughs> Rudy. Six five, hold on, I gotta talk to you this way. There you are. There you go. Just My keep bad, on looking sorry. Keep I was on looking at your Adam's apple the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get squeeze in there. Yeah. Sorry, we want to go. Want to go no, let's just go no. over there Sorry and push him because this is the time. You said he designed it, right? Yeah. Can we bombard you for a couple questions? Welcome to Alfred Montaner's YouTube channel. So he was telling me that you were like, like many nights uh, thinking about uh -huh. this amazing <laughs> vessel. So can you tell us a little bit something about it? Well, it, we have a, a very successful 46 foot catamaran center console that this hull is the same as. Yeah. Wanting to build something, it was a close, you can get out of the weather, you can put seven people inside, you can sleep in it. Once you start thinking, how are we going to fit all that things onto this boat that was normally just a center console? Let's look inside it real quick so yeah. we can we can see exactly because I think this is this is one of the things. So so you already had this envisioned, right? Like Yeah, you kind of start out how sketching and laying out and trying to figure out the space out and how what can really fit in there and how you're going to make it work and then you you go back to the drawing board yeah. into it, you know, and, and figuring out exactly how much space we're going to have between seats and how much research and development time would you say it took you to to really dial this in nine months wow so you're talking about a, a lot of a lot of work to, yeah, to get this everything before we build any molds everything is in a 3d computer rendering so i mean every piece of every part is, is what, what excites you the most about this when you were when you were building this and designing this what excites you the most that you're like this is going to make this special yeah well there is nothing like it which is a great thing so you're that always helps that people don't you know they don't know what to expect when they get on the boat and then they're like you know wow yeah there's so much going on inside here yet yeah. You can still fish it, you, you, know, you can do all the things that you would on a center console, but you get to come inside and be quiet. Mm -hmm. It's nice. The boat. One of the reasons why I came it's in so here, fast. because I don't have a mic on you, and I wanted to change the atmosphere real quick, and we have everything open. Yeah. But I'm assuming right now, if you touch these buttons, yeah. and we can close this up 100%. I was going to go close the window as soon as I had a chance. Let's do it. Let's do that. So, yeah. so, oh, look, this is oh, yeah, it's Mills' birthday. So. Yeah, we got a birthday in the booth what's too. His, so what's his name? David Mills. David Mills. He's Happy a birthday. He's on uh, Scott's engineering team. I love so. that. Um, <laughs> you'll see the video oh, afterwards. Ready? They're participating. I'm going to give him a little little extra birthday shout out on this one because it's always a celebration. You have to have the ham horn, the Miami horn. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love that. This is what, what's so amazing about my channel. I just run and gun with the teams, right? Yeah. And they're the ones telling me what they're passionate about on these boats. We walked this boat last year. It was last year, right? The, yeah, the normal well, 46. Yeah. yeah, the 46. So so now seeing the transition to this, I actually filmed, I was the first person to film this boat coming out of Hallover. Oh, yeah. Oh, when really? you guys were sea traveling. Oh, no, so yeah, <laughs> I didn't get any. I didn't get any crazy footage of you guys, um, but I did get it. And and my audience noticed, and they said, "Is that the new pilot house?" But you know, invincible. But I since it didn't have any branding and they didn't have the frigates on there, I didn't yeah. want to butcher it just in case. Yeah. But I was definitely liking the look. Yeah. Thank you. So so one of the things that say the ladies, you know, they're like, hey, you know, I like I like everything that the catamarans have. They're stable. They don't rock as much, and uh, they're 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 good on, on rough water. But you know, there's certain comforts that they don't have because there's that. Look behind you. All right, so that's what we're talking about. Let's go ahead and see what we got behind us, guys. And we'll walk back here, and we'll get a better. Your head compartment here. Scott did a good job of designing two different types of doors to give you privacy. So that sleeping board that's in there has its own door that's held together by magnets. The next door opens up the head compartment. And one thing in terms of getting yourself some more space, the one drawback, the one thing that you can't 
get with is more depth. But mm -hmm. what Scott did that was really genius is in terms of if someone needs to stand up to do anything, you have extra headroom for taking care of what you want to do. If you're not going to be up here when you're running because you're so far forward anyway. Yeah. So it's one of those where you're fully enclosed, you can get some privacy. People, hey, mind if I take care of something real quick? Boom. Going into it. Because when you're on a boat fishing anyway, Nobody's using the head as it is except for our female right. friends. So everyone's out in the cockpit with their baits out working on something anyway. So, And, and it's, very, it's very roomy in here, right? Like it's very tall. So I'm sure... Uh, that's, that's well, I mean, I'm 6'5", I'm 6'5", I'm 225, I'm ripped. I'm, I'm almost touching the end. I, I hope my reflection is not coming in that mirror. Uh, but listen, I am, I am extremely, extremely um, fascinated on how you thought this out. And I'm glad that you were here and I could see, and, and my audience could see, you know, what was living your <laughs> brain for a minute. <laughs> and then, uh, absolutely it took awesome. A while to yeah. How <laughs> we thought it would work. And what's cool too is that there's. Leads to another yep. issue. Awesome. Like the doors. And, and what's cool is that there's two different seating configurations. So you're seeing one of the configurations here, but there's a second one already that's been developed in terms of getting yourself a longer U shaped couch. So these two release marine helmet chairs don't exist, they get eliminated, and you have a longer U-shaped couch. You can have it as a second berth. This panel right here actually folds across and you can put additional upholstery on there, so you have another sleeping berth in here if you'd like. But it's awesome, because if you want to bring the outdoors in, you just open that windshield and you're good. Exactly. Yeah, you're good. Right and and I'm gonna go show that berth through it one, yeah. one a And there's bit. two zones of air conditioning. So you have a nice um, berth in here. It's got a sliding window in the front so you can get natural air. Yeah, I showed them on the, uh, the seat back. I, uh, I li listen. I think, I think the family that loves to fish together is going to enjoy something like this in the Pacific Northwest, in the in the no in Northeast, mm -hmm. play and here. I mean, how many times do, are we are we uncomfortable? I, it's I don't, too hot. Listen. Yeah, it's too <laughs> yeah. hot. Listen, sometimes I'm like, hey, my friends call me, and, and I, I'm the most invited person on a boat in the world. I I I'm, I'm literally am, and I'm like, nah, man, I'm good because. I kind of want to be comfortable, right? If, if I'm doing this all the time, you know, I'm like, hey, um, I, I, I can only go 50, 60. Don't throw your hat with ice and put it back yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but listen, okay, so what are we talking about um, fuel capacity on something like this? Same as the 46, it's 1,000 gallons. 1,000 gallons. So, so you don't have to worry about filling up a bimini. You're just going over there, come back, then go back to Biscayne Bay, go to the sandbar, go party yeah. somewhere else. Even on our smaller boats, like that 39 mono that holds about 560 gallons of fuel, you can spend an entire week there and not have to fill up. Now, and I'm gonna ask you some other questions. Right now we have quad 450s on this. You mm -hmm. said it's close to 70 something. Like 75, I 75. believe you guys hit. People are gonna ask, well, what if you put uh, two 600s? Is, is it not? 600 is just not something well, we would. It wouldn't be, you could only put two. And okay. Then you'd only have 1,200 horsepower. Right. And you'd never get on a plane if one motor went out. So okay. That's the. But you know, some why. people, some people will ask the question, and 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 this 450 enough. 450 package is, is 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 amazing on this particular yeah, bottom. 400s are amazing. 400s mm -hmm. are plenty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 400s on on a 46. The open version is still a 70 plus mile an hour boat as it is. Economy. Still 70 or so miles an hour. All right, Scott. Well, listen, I'm going to go ahead and get into the nitty gritty with I'm going to ask really about money now. So, we're going to talk about price. So, <laughs> if you want to get out, uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't know that. People ask me, I have no idea. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Scott that, was, that was awesome. And I listen, he's the best. But, but here's the thing, right? When you see something and someone so talented, right, mm -hmm. to produce and make and design something like this, you got to go ahead and let those people because the people who actually are gonna be interested in this boat are gonna feel connected. They understand now how this evolved. Well, here's the best part about Scott. Uh, when I was writing his bio a couple of years ago when we redid our website a little bit, the first sentence you'll see on his bio on the website is, if you've been on a boat in your life, the chances are you've been on a boat that's designed by Scott. Because Scott has been in this industry for over 30 years, 40, 50 years now almost. Wow. He designed a lot of the Boston Whalers from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, from one of the master crafts in the 90s and early 2000s, that was Scott. Hinkley was Scott for a little while. He's been everywhere, and he's been with Invincible now for several years. But and who needs a name drop, right? 
<laughs> yeah, but no, Scott's been... Take advantage of it, absolutely. Look, Scott's a gem, and it's something where this boat, the new 43 that's on the other side too, he's done a phenomenal job so, in terms so of... So Rudy, tell me a little bit about the, the, this helm and, and, and what yeah. we got going on here. So obviously when you have to have your ingress and egress to go to your birth center, your console looks a little different than what your prototypical center console helm station looks like. So a few things on these seats, these footrests fold up and down. They're put here because you have such a higher seating position with these pedestals. Mm -hmm. Even a guy who's 6'5 may feel small because Me. they're going to dangle. Exactly. 6'5, you said 219? 225. 225. I gave four pounds. I didn't want to look so... It was all so, muscle. Yeah, I didn't want to look so ripped at the show, you know? <laughs> yeah, you got to cut a little bit for yeah, the show. You, know, I, you got it. You I got understand. Ready to see. Yeah, well, it's, it's in season, you know? It's like season. You, exactly. when, you're, when you're given the D1 scholarship, you bulk up, and over the course of the season, you cut. I got you. You can't be in the gym that often. Yeah. So, yeah, you have your... And I believe it's also push over forward. Either way. Ha <laughs> ha! There it is. There it so, is. So yeah, you have twin screens here, and obviously because of the new T-top design, you have additional electronics you can place over top. This is not a structural pole. This is just simply for wiring your pieces together. It's better for dealers to install their electronics that way, because if not, you'd have to run the wiring through the support structures in the windshield. Mm -hmm. And if you're a dealer, if you're somebody who's like installing your electronics separately, yeah. that's a nightmare. So it's just very simple to do. Is there that access way. that we can see some of that wiring or no? Yeah, it's in the head compartment. Some of it also is just your, your audio system is all down here. So let's pull this up for you real quick and show you. That's all your JL audio controls because there's a lot of speakers on here, obviously. And then the rest of the access. I just saw somebody on the camera get into the boat. Do you want to eliminate them? No. <laughs> I like that feature though. I'll tell you signed what. a release, right? Yeah, I like that. So yeah, the rest of your access is right here. So you have we go. two panels. Oh, here's where I can use this little privacy piece. Ready? Ta -da. There you go. So yeah, this is your top part with your Garmin screens. Let me tell you, I, I'm really liking. Here's your second and third. So if you want, I can get out of the way. No, no that's fine. I, I mean, the, the idea, we, we, we okay. kind of got it. So, okay. you know, look, it checks a lot of boxes for somebody who's interested in, in this type of boat, right? They're like, all of a sudden, you know, you have a, a very capable catamaran, right? Different from the monohull, which you guys also make monohulls. Mm -hmm. Start with monohulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you have a very capable bottom that's been fished a lot throughout the world mm -hmm. because I've seen a lot of your socials and people catching swordfish and all types of fish. But now you have given them an, an alternative as far as, hey, you can do all that and be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just say more comfortable, right? Because everybody's a little different. Right, well, the, here's the fun story behind the whole reason this came about. Let's go. We announced that 46 two years ago. As we announced the boat, we were getting a lot of questions from people in those different markets who are talking about, hey, if you ever build an enclosed pilot house, mm -hmm. I'm in, count me in. Hey, you guys thought about doing a pilot house? Have you thought about doing an enclosed version? We, the first guy you think, oh, are they just pulling your leg? Yeah, maybe we'll think about doing that. Then the third guy, then the fourth guy, then the eighth guy, then the 10th guy, then the 12th guy, yeah. then the 15th guy. And it's here. And by the time that happened, it's here. <laughs> you ask them two years ago, if you're serious about this, yeah. we're gonna do a business case. We're gonna look into it. And here you are, two years later. So right. it's been I am, done. I am a big fan. I am excited that I was able to to, to showcase it. And it's, it's I'm happy always, to have you here. It's always fun. And you know what I heard? I heard that you guys got some social influencers that are going to be on a boat soon, too. Ah, we're here for the announcement yesterday. We can show you over on the screen probably really quickly. Let's see the bottom and then we go to the screen. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're going to go and we're going to cut and we're going to go to the screen. Back there, like that. There you go. Boom! You're back. Here we go. Okay. Uh, all right. So now we got a good perspective. How massive this bad boy? This might even be the thumbnail. Uh, look at this. Just go yeah. like that. Do a Van der White pose. Boom! <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, she's. So this is what makes this boat so capable. I'll get this plan out of your way because of that windless anchor. There you go. So this is it. This, this is this is what. This, this is what makes this boat so stable. Rough waters, I mean, listen, if somebody always asks me, hey Alfred, what's one of the most capable boats? I say, listen, go look for a cat mm -hmm. and uh, go come check out those invincibles that have been going. I remember that one time that I was like, 
He crushed. He crushed it. <laughs> yes. Remember that video? Yes. Guys, there was a video. Dogging. Of, yeah, yes, yes, dogging. yeah. <laughs> yes. Those guys, and they didn't think they were on camera. I wasn't even filming at that time on the inlet. Um, and Hollow Inlet, guys, if you don't know, it's probably one of the roughest inlets in the world. It's fun. It's an exciting place to go. So and thankfully, it's close to our factory, so we can use it to see trout. Speaking of, the factory is in Opelaka, Opelaka Florida, which is, which is an area where a lot of the craftsmen in South Florida work. Yeah. And it's been like that for many, many it's years. It's been a boat building heritage. I mean, if you name a company that started here, that's where they began. The Mako factory, the original Mako factory is somewhere within like a couple of miles of where our factory is. And also you see Cigarette is there, you, you name them, they're around Opelaka. Let's, so yeah, uh, this is our patented Morelli and Melvin Hull. Those guys, I can't speak enough about those naval architects. They're out of uh, Newport Beach, California. Mm -hmm. If you follow America's Cup, when they did the uh, hydroplaning, uh, sorry, hydrofoil sailing cats, that was them. If you watch the Olympic sailing, that's them who designed those. They're all over the place. So these influencers that are gonna be on one of your boats, uh, which boat is it gonna be? So that's all the way down this way. You wanna go see it or? Let's tease them. Okay. It's, but, a, uh, let's, it's a 33 open fisherman. It's a 33, and are we gonna see them on uh, camera maybe, on, on the TV? We might, well you'll see them on the wall for sure, because they are right here. The Gale Force Twins! So they are gonna be seeing the Gale Force Twins on the 33. We'll give them one little quick tease. Okay. Let's go, come on. Let's go, let's go check yeah, it out. Come on guys, let's go see a cut go this way though. Of this 33. That, uh, it's not gonna be this exact boat. It's but that it, exact boat. It's this exact boat? It's that exact this boat. This is their boat? Yeah. Oh, we're, we're gonna have to sign it. Hold on a second guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is so You're going to awesome. put a little chicho inside the console? There, there we go. I'm going to put a little chicho over here. You know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to tell them one day to do an instructional video at Black Point Marina where I filmed the chicho. It's not a bad idea. That would be an amazing, amazing idea. They got a sweet truck to pull it too. But uh, yeah, so this is their boat. So this is it, guys. They are, this is the 33. Yeah, they're sponsored by Simrad, so it's got Simrad everything on here. You know, I hope I'm not outing their video. <laughs> You're not. Okay, You're not. so it was fully announced yesterday. Okay. And they even said it too, like, hey, this is our boat. They took some photos on it. You're all not right. you're not spoiling all anything. Right, all right, all right. <laughs> I was like, damn, I want to get this video no. up as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> right, now. Get you the punch, ladies. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, but yeah, this is their boat. So even Simrad VHFs. Uh, the cool thing about this boat, it's not just any 33 Open Fisherman. Mm -hmm. They are the first ones to have a new option that's available on the 33. All right, guys, we got to get a little close because now we don't have audio on him. So, oh, you lost. All no, 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 don't worry about it. We're getting it from me. I got you. So, we do coffin box lounges all the time, but this is the first one done on the 33. So, it's a little bit smaller, as you notice. It fits that hull it's the first one that has it now it's available on all 33s it's still a coffin box lounger it's just a little smaller to meet the boat i like it yeah i like it a lot and the cool thing too is you know just like just like all of the other boats that have the coffin box loungers the difference in our layout is that if you didn't have this it would be this forward fish box and there's a smaller like deep fish box right here you eliminate the fish box below the deck to get more storage space in your console but the coffin box gives you basically the size of that same fish box elevated. So you don't really lose it. You gain more space below, but you have a larger fish box up top. I'm a fan. I'm a big, big fan. What's the beam and uh, speed on something like this? Uh, so this is, it's powered by twin 300 Verado V8. So you're I'm familiar at, with those. Huh? Yes, you are. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Not the same ones though. The, the, Not the, the same the ones. The older versions. A little wetter. <laughs> <laughs> a little saltier. There you go. Rudy knows. Poco Guys, de sal. If you've yeah. been watching my channel for a long time, it, hey, listen, it, it, the story ended up great. It I, was, well, yes. I mean, yeah, because it went full circle, you know? So, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see the actual boat. Like, they're going to have so much fishing that they can do on this 33. Not on their boat, but price point, if somebody wants to maybe do a build, similar build. To, to this, and, and we haven't even talked about build price on the pilot house. So yes. What what are we looking at? Let's let's talk about the pilot house first. Okay. What, price the point? way that it's listed right there, it's about one point eight. Okay, one point eight. The way that we saw that one. The way that we Hole saw number it. Yeah. One. Hole number one. Is that somebody's boat already, or are you guys? It's be going soon? to be someone's boat very soon. It's one of those where we like to hold on to the first one and do some more testing. Yeah. Obviously, we have to do walkthrough videos and yeah, photography, yeah, all, all the things. All the good stuff. When a guy buys a boat, I want my boat, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. we're gonna hold on to it for a little bit, and then it'll be going. 
to somebody. L I have to check these guys on what the 33 goes for because prices have continued to we'll, go up. We'll, well, listen, we'll put that in the description. Okay. Then. But let's show the the, the interior. The the interior here yeah. of of because I mean this is this is their boat, guys. This is their boat. Want me to get you a marker? Um, a Sharpie? I'll put a sticker. Actually, you know what? <laughs> I got a key. I, 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 I'll go ahead and just do it on the jump code. Don't worry about it. They should be cool with it. They're su super nice girls. What are you, an ex-boyfriend? No, come you on. Go with the key on this? Actually, you know what? Um, I actually helped them with behind the scenes footage on mm -hmm. in the Palm Beach show. And then we did something at the Miami show. I started my my lives, mm -hmm. which you know get crazy. I started at their booth. Right there with you. Yeah, which is it's always fun. There's, there's such They have such a great channel, guys. And if you don't check out the Gale Force Trends, check them out because now they're going to even now they're going to be just going further and further on this inf Invincible. You'll see them going to Bimini back and forth with it. They're going to be fishing the Keys, the Tortugas, awesome. all over the place. And with their dog. With Kona. That's yep. Kona's spot right up front. I already know. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, listen up. I want to thank Rudy. Rudy, where can they go online to get more information on Invincible, the Pilot House, this boat, all your other boats? Because you have a whole line that we didn't talk about. Anywhere and everywhere. We're online at our website, InvincibleBoats.com. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Invincible Boats as well as the handle and then you can find all the YouTube videos on our channel also our YouTube channel Can you hold the camera so they can of see course. that I'm 6'5", 225 guys? Hold on. This yeah. is what 6'5", 225 and ripped looks like I don't, What's wrong with that lens? It's making me look a little bit bigger Is that? That's my fault, I smudged it, my oh, bad Okay, never mind, God, sorry about that, that wasn't me um, Yeah, where's, where's Alfred? Alfred! Have your mother making a scene as always Rudy, close it! Oh! You gotta go closer, man. Not don't don't break the lens. That's Peter. why I was trying to be wait, safe. Wait, 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 wait. Go, go. 